Right, uh, next, they are cheap, highly nutritious and in plentiful supply, but... <laughs> you're looking anxious. Mm. Could insects be creeping their way into our shopping baskets anytime soon? Deliberately, I presume, not just creeping in. No, I'm a bit anxious. As the cost of meat rises, researchers in the Netherlands are looking at ways to persuade people to get their protein from bugs instead. And John Maguire's been to try some. Gosh. Now, from Tom Sawyer and Huckleberry Finn to Ratty and Mole in The Wind and the Willows, pairs of best friends loom large in many children's books. But is it actually good for children to have one best friend? Well, one primary school head teacher thinks that children shouldn't have a best friend as it makes them possessive and can cause arguments. We asked some children and their parents what they thought. Yeah, that's what I seem to remember, actually. So should children have a best friend, or is it better for them to have several good ones? We'd like to hear what you think. You can email us, of course, to bbcbreakfast at bbc.co.uk to discuss today's other stories with breakfast viewers on a Facebook page. You can go to facebook.com slash bbcbreakfast. And, of course, you can tweet us as well at bbcbreakfast. Coming up in the next half hour, we will be live in Snowdonia to meet the men who spend their free time measuring mountains. Time now, though, to get the news, travel and weather where you are. Hello, this is Breakfast with Roger Johnson and Sean Lloyd. It's exactly half past six. Let's bring you a, a summary of the main news. Husbands or wives of British people living abroad will no longer automatically receive a state pension under plans being drawn up by the government. Ministers are concerned. Police have recaptured one of two prisoners who escaped from a prison van in Salford... Tensions are mounting in the Middle East following Israel's attack on Syria yesterday. One of the most high-profile trials since the Second World War is about to get underway in Munich. The world's first working gun has been produced using parts from a 3D printer. Now imagine you're playing the drums as part of a parade in London's West End and the Queen suddenly appears telling you to be quiet. Yeah, I wish I could have seen their faces. <laughs> Those are the main stories this morning. Carol will have the weather in about ten minutes. Uh, it's the bank holiday, of course, which means uh, lots of sport going on, lots to look back on, lots to uh, look forward to today. Uh, Catherine Downs is with us this morning. We're talking... Talking about Dundee being relegated from the SPL. I actually gave them the shock of their lives this morning when they thought that perhaps they've been relegated. Of course they haven't. They... And remember we saw the first women athletes competing from Saudi Arabia in the Olympics right. last year. Well, there's been good news from Saudi Arabia. The law is changing now so that girls only at private schools to begin with can now compete in sport because at the moment women are banned from being members of sports clubs in Saudi Arabia and there's been a real drive from women in Saudi Arabia to win the right to participate in sport. So we'll be seeing more of them in the future. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well, Kat, thanks very much. Thanks very much, Kat. Thank you. Back now to this morning's main story, the tragic speedboat accident which happened in North Cornwall yesterday afternoon. A man and his eight-year-old daughter were killed in the Camel Estuary near Padstow. Four other mem members of the same family suffered what police described as life-changing injuries and were airlifted to hospital in Plymouth. We can speak now to Ian Guy, who's the watch manager at Falmouth Coast Guard Station, about the uh, rescue operation. Uh, Ian, thank you very much indeed for talking to us this morning. Can you just describe from the Coast Guard's point of view, what happened yesterday. Ian Guy, the watch manager at uh, Falmouth Coast Guard this morning. 16.41 now. Attempts to free the last remaining British resident being held at Guantanamo Bay, Shaka Ama, could soon be renewed. The 47-year-old has spent 11 years at the notorious prison but has never been charged with any offence. He's been cleared for release since 2007 and now there are hopes that the Foreign Secretary may make a public plea for his release. Mr Anna's lawyer, Clive Stafford-Smith, joins us from his home in Dorset. Very good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. Um, if there was this public appeal from the Foreign Secretary, how important would that be? And how is your client now? Because he's on a hunger strike, isn't he? Do you know how he is? Um, it is just approaching quarter to seven. You're watching Breakfast from BBC News. Let's remind you of the morning's main stories. Also coming up in the programme this morning, the thought of eating insects might make your stomach churn, but it's claimed that they will become a staple part of our diet in future. We'll find out why. And uh, I have to tell you, we're going to try for yourselves just before nine o'clock. <laughs> I think it's called...